the chance we have in the morning and in the evening. How to help put the mind in the right frame for meditating. We reflect on the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha to give us a sense of inspiration that we're following a path that many people have followed with success for many, many centuries. And it's a good path. It's been taught by good people, people of integrity, people who are willing to make the sacrifices that were necessary for true happiness and then come back and share that knowledge with others. We also have thoughts of goodwill. That's to protect us against our thoughts of ill will. All too often as you're meditating, you sit here and you start remembering things that somebody did to you in the past or things that you did to other people that you don't like to remember, but they come up. And so the mind can very easily get into a tailspin that way. And the way to protect that, or to prevent that, protect yourself from those unskillful thoughts is to spread thoughts of goodwill, first to yourself, then to the other people. Wherever they may be, may they be happy. May I be happy now. Because going over past ills like that is not going to make you happy. If you really want to make yourself happy, then you work on de training the mind, developing the mind. So that kind of contemplation helps put you back on track. Sometimes we have the contemplation of the parts of the body. That's to overcome lust. You start getting fixated on somebody's beautiful body. And you begin to realize, what well, is there to that? You know, the body grows old. It's full of illnesses. Any happiness that's based on the body is very, very temporary, and usually brings in a lot of pain along with it. So it's good to remember these things to help pull you out of those thoughts. Sometimes we have the reflection on aging, illness, and death. That's to remind yourself that the time we have here is very short. And you want to put the mind in a position where it's not going to suffer when aging, illness, and death come, because as the chant says, they're unavoidable. But what you can avoid is the suffering that comes when the mind isn't trained. So all of these are reflections to help get you on the path, get you back on the path when the mind is wandered off. They protect you from your own unskillful tendencies. That's why they're called guardian meditations. They act as your bodyguards or your mind guards to keep the mind on the path. So when you find yourself wandering off, remember there are ways to think that help get you back on. And the chance we have, they're not just to mouth and be done with, they're for you to f reflect on and then to put into practice and whenever the mind needs them. So to make the most of the chance, look at the meaning, think about how it re has an impact on your practice, and then learn to use these contemplations when they're helpful. Get the mind back with the breath so it can do the real work of looking into what's going on right here, right now. But all of it's real work. Whenever the mind is going off someplace else, get, bring it back. That's an important part of the practice. It's not an obstacle of the practice. It's in one of the important stages that you have to learn how to learn from. You learn a lot about the mind by seeing it wander away and learning how to bring it back. So you use these skillful ways of thinking to counteract the unskillful ways that tend to lord it over the mind. And you can change the balance of power inside. Put the skillful ones on top. <laughs>